fight to remove all foreign power. And that's about all we get for the baddies' motivations. Sometimes the most simple reason is the best one. It's neat seeing this perspective of Al Katala, seeing them smoking, one being anxious before descending upon the civilians, it really humanizes them, which was a goal of Modern Warfare 2019. <laughs> Now that's a powerful opening. Made perfect by that cut to absolute silence with the Modern Warfare title card, forcing us to realize that in 2019, this is what Modern Warfare looks like. Or looked like. Add on the confusion of the civilians or complete lack of attention given to this man grounds the scene a bit and makes it hurt even more. Tommy Watcher, we'll handle it. Every time. The transition from cutscenes to first person view is impeccably smooth and brings me into the characters more. I would be smoking if I didn't mention the new engine used for Modern Warfare. The biggest overall COD has had in years, and it's basically the selling point of the title. Without the new engine and the vast attention to detail with the guns, I don't think people would have cared nearly as much as they did with this title. The new engine provided those AAA visuals that we all know and love, with not many others being able to step to it. It's also the buttery smooth animation work at every turn that makes this feel even more like a military sim, which all culminates in the perfect mission clean house. Looking for us. Two marks, no as well, mention not to fire on any marked Russian soldiers. Alex's squad takes time to identify these men before taking any shots. The attention to rules of engagement is thorough and really pulled me in and is very important to what Modern Warfare is trying to highlight. Michael Bay would be so proud. Lights out, Echo. And our squad making callouts to us really pulls me off. I mean, and pulls me in into the characters. Modern Warfare's most shining quality is depicting war through its gameplay rather than its politics it's based around. Having these moments of doing everything right and still losing for it is the harsh reality of war. Kill the powers in here, I'm telling you. Shit, see that? Find him. Nobody told me Modern Warfare was going to be a horror game. For the keen eye, you'll notice that this is Hadir coming up, using his trademark AUG. I mean, we'd never notice or care about this upon first playing, but it's neat nonetheless. Wrong one. Hey, hey, you got it all wrong. It's actually called No Russian, silly Billy. We need a QRF in there right now. That's not advisable. And that is not your call. Colonel. Guess Seer really is the one with the force again, coming in at the perfect time to defuse the situation. The fingerprints are all over this, Laswell. Fix it. Oh, just kidding. She's with the dark side. She's mad. The good old classic shoulder wipe camera movement to show how our character's world is being shifted to the other foot. I've got a problem. Russians. Nothing makes it past our boy price. Unless you're Makarov. They could be anywhere. Paris, New York. London. Murder and Price fake out. But man, is this new model so damn beautiful. Terrorists know that too, sir. Garrick, don't turn London into a war zone. Garrick really displaying he's not a fan of doing what needs to bum the second we meet him. It isn't the first time done in Call of Duty, but it's the best in Call of Duty that Infinity Ward has done of having to filter through civilians and place our shots well. I mean, hell, there was one where it didn't matter where you placed your shots as long as they were on them and they were on the ground, you know what I mean? Price walking out of that bright light and smoke like he's the Lord above himself, and I'm inclined to believe he is. It's no coincidence that this building's catchphrase is the exact opposite of what's happening to it now. That's being unfair. Guess you could say the building is being innovated on right now and is inspiring all Katala? No? Okay, yeah, I'm reaching. Eh, what's new? What are you doing? No! No! Leave it to Price to always make the hard call. Russian gas. Only Alcatala would do this. <laughs> the Russians make no distinction between Alcatala and your people. And I make no distinction between Alcatala and the Russian army. Farah's zero talents policy is even going to extend to her family later on. These cutscenes are next freaking level. Show me this a couple years ago and tell me it was live action and I might be inclined to believe you. Was never expecting to meet another character who could also have facial hair that matched Price. We must hold nothing back. Too far on that path, and we lose ourselves. Here you're using the gas shadowing. Watch my sister. Spoken a little too soon, since we're about to be beneath her on a ladder. It's ridiculous, but cool to have us use some more guerrilla tactics fighting out here with Farah. It's always a treat to crawl under vehicles in a Call of Duty game. Imagine how different the multiplayer would be if we could there. A little all gillied up reference, since Call of Duty not being self-referential would be like Price without his mustache and chops. Think we fight this war with sticks and stones? Love as he says this, we walk upon a car 98, a gun that basically feels like sticks and stones nowadays. I get why they call it Air Cab now. This is the new horses hitting you in the back. Our guys just got Deus Ex Machina, and I'm sure this actually happens all the time. 
Something you might notice is that each of these ID pictures actually correspond with those that we find inside the house, including the mother and child too. Something they could have just ignored because my dumbass totally would have forgotten about it with my pea sized attention span. But here I am having one to make these videos, so. And now we've got the best mission in the entire campaign and probably the only reason the campaign is remembered. Clean house is for sure one of those instant classics of a mission like all gillied up and no Russian, which can be no higher praise as when I think of other specific missions, not many stand out like these. Maybe Vorkuta from Black Ops 1. The thing that makes Clean House so different and like nothing else we've ever seen is that the level is designed at a one-to-one -one scale, meaning proportional to our character models. It's exactly to real life scale. That instantly gives the mission its own distinct feel compared to all others and almost all other video games. Most game levels create their levels at about a 30% scale to give room for gameplay and eh, pathing. Think about the mission Blackout and COD 4 and how insanely different the level design is. I really love the one-to-one -one scale. I hope they move forward with doing more of this in gaming. Plus the sound design is so specific when you use headphones. When paired with 3D headphones, the footsteps and voices make the scene so insanely tense for the entire runtime of the mission. Which is only about 8 minutes, but it feels like an eternity going through it in the best way possible. Everything was performance captured on each floor, which is why the mission feels so realistic. This is the kind of thing you'd expect out of AAA studios, and they deliver. Doing this amount of capture work and having the studio space and money to pull it off is something that only these giants can do, and it floors me to see them finally capitalize on it. It's also on record by former SAS soldiers that this is the most realistic portrayal of what cleaning a house looks like in a video game. With only minor errors that are attributed to the fact that this is still a video game and has gamey aspects that the player must commit to. Two X right down. We all know this one. Infinity Ward brought in actual Navy SEALs to do the performance capture on this team too. What's most insane about this mission is that it has more custom animations and scripting than the entirety of COD 4, and Infinity Ward was even thinking to wager that it has more than the entire original trilogy combined. This was one of those mistakes I was mentioning. Sergeant Sun would have 100% cleared the room before moving beyond it, but Infinity Ward wanted to have their shocking moment of just having a comrade blown away in seconds without the slightest chance of helping them. But actually, you can blind fire through the door and save Sergeant Esposito, which the team will comment on hoping there's an enemy behind that door, since rules of engagement states that they must know a target is beyond the door to not injure civilians. I'd say if you did that, you're just really getting to the role play of Garrick, taking the gloves off. Answer the door! Did they really just say, answer the door? Because if they did, that's so funny. Then they're forcing us to single fire. Far more often than not do soldiers fire in singles or bursts and rarely go full auto like our goopy goblin brain does in gaming. Can't fault a man that'll full send. So if you shoot the woman, you don't get a game over since there's 100% plausibility that we'd think she's going for a weapon having not listened to our instructions. But if we shoot the baby, we do because obviously. But the better part is, is if you do it three times in a row, you get a text that says, are you serious? And then it quits you out of the mission. Then just seeing the enemies get into the bed, it's such a small detail, but having to deal with scenarios we've never had to deal with like this in a COD game before really threw me for a loop, and, once again, the best way possible. She was going for a bloody detonator. Good job we dropped it in. We made the right call, sir. We'll bet your house. Love this little interaction. Garrick's still grappling if he did the right thing. I really should have just titled this video Everything Great About Clean House, because I had way too much to say about it. Ferris cigarette is self-rolled, which would track in a war-torn country with pre-rolled filtered cigarettes would be a rare. Attention to detail. And you? Where will you go when this is over? Wherever they send me. You don't choose. Damn, but I love this line explored more in a campaign about the soldier condition and the toll and possible disillusionment one can have with the military. Actual exploration, not Mono for 2 slash 3. But I'll take this line because it got me thinking about it. We'll be here until sunrise. I'll cover the open corner. I really enjoy these two. The entire time, I can't tell if their relationship is platonic or romantic. Either way, it doesn't matter, and I think they're cute. Echo 3-1. Sergeant Griggs, all day. Yo, they even brought Griggs back. Loki, my favorite from COD 4. You Kareem? All day. Ah, camaraderie. The speed of that callback gave me whiplash. Let's move! I don't know if I can count it as a win because it's the exact same soundbite from 2009's Modern Warfare 2, but it gave me a huge wave of nostalgia. So between the opening IED, the tripwires, and the fake corpses in the hospitals, this mission really brings that feeling of uncertainty and anxiety. A threat truly can come from anywhere. Damn, that's what was missing in this game. More marine missions. I'll take what I can get though. Loved hearing all the chatter among the demon dogs and really reminded me of Foley from Modern Warfare 2. One, two, what's your status? Yeah,
Moments like these are when playing on veteran is the best. I 100% would have died to the soldier if I was, and that feeling of how unfair war is would be directly translated to me through gameplay, which, like I mentioned, is Modern Warfare's strength. Say what you will about Modern Warfare 2019, but you can't say it's slow. Not even five seconds after capturing Omar, we're being thrown into the siege to break him out. Quick think of price. I appreciate that 2019 set pieces are a bit more believable. No more jumping giant snow mountain gaps or ramping speedboats. Good, you're here. They need five minutes to finish up. What can I do to help? Find weapons, barricade the doors. It's the extraction team! No yours. You, open this door. Walk it behind us. That's great. Price just survived a bird being grounded and without missing a bee is giving actionable orders to these embassy workers and seeing him be so sure and determined is why he's the captain, baby. Extraction point fast. Oh my god. Death made me sh my pants. Good job, Infinity Ward, you cheeky bastards. You know I gotta win the death quotes. At the end of the day, it's still a COD campaign. Yeah, the marketing was some bullshit hyping up what is inevitably a distorted, watered-down version of the real conflict. But honestly, what did we all expect? This is among the largest franchises in gaming history beholden to shareholders, sadly. You really expected a campaign that would truly push the envelope? It's a shame that we live in a world so governed by the bottom line that we can't even get accurate history in our video games. Something COD games used to pride themselves on, if you believe it or not. Such as the gas attack being changed from the US doing it in real life to the Russians. The game is banned in Russia, if you didn't know. Point being, temper the hell out of your expectations when it comes to these mega corporations, and even them, just pray to not be disappointed. At the very least, Modern Warfare 2019 had potential, and this scene highlights the trauma that soldiers have to deal with when faced with an ultimatum, in which there is only one answer. The one with less casualties. Modern Warfare excels at not making every mission a shooting gallery like previous games, and has some more varied objectives in gameplay other than shoot everyone or do the stealth mission. Adam? No, no, no! Stacy, pick up the phone! Stacy. We have to get you out of here. God damn it, Stacy, leave it! I'm sorry, Adam. Really neat seeing non military people grapple with having to leave someone behind. Holy s. Holy s. What a performance. That little laugh as she runs to safety. After being in the jaws of death for five minutes, it's such an honest reaction instead of some stereotypical sigh of relief and crumble. Like, just amazed to be alive, and you know how it is sometimes. The only thing you can do is laugh after some crazy circumstances. And to add some more flair <laughs> to what would just be a stock standard shooting gallery, we've got to shoot the mortar light to see. Continues on the theme of this war of the unseen enemy. Sometimes it's fun to be transported into the drone to lay down hell, but having to be boots on the ground, finding targets, adds a whole new level to it. Having to see with our own eyes, making sure not to designate ourselves, and having to find the proper angle to get a good paint. Unknown vehicle across the field. I cannot imagine being in that car right now. They're probably thinking, I knew I missed my turn back there. God damn it. And now they're in a war zone. Negative. Neat. We've got to lead our targets. What happens when the CIA goes to sleep? What? They go undercover. Not bad. Probably better in English. You told it in English. Learning? I don't know, y'all. You tell me. Perfect for the assistance. I'll spot for you, Alex. Oh, wow. We're finally using spotters for our sniper sections. COD always feels like two steps forward, one step back. But hey, spotters. The target is 400 meters away. Aim two notches above it. As someone who just purchased a crossbow and spent some time getting that dialed in and practicing at different ranges, it was a blast having ballistics, however crude, be a factor in this mission. Really makes me want to play Sniper Elite. Hit. That's we back, mom, dad. <laughs> a reference to gas talking about soap in COD 4. And actually, the feeling of getting comfortable with the ballistics was something that was really cool and I didn't expect to really catch on to that quickly. That was just rewarding. To say the least. Stop them! Alex, find a way to stop them! Thank you, game, for not just telling me to shoot the tires. Let me figure that out on my own. It's a simple thing, but give me some credit. Russian gas? Whoa, plot twist! But it's something, and I'll take it, because this story needs something. Hadira, though. These men are in reference to the Syrian civil defense with their white helmets. And Syria is practically what this entire game is based on. Like I said, Modern Warfare gets really fun with some of their level design. What makes this the most fun is having the small frame of a child and being able to hide in more unconventional places. It gives a whole new meaning to the meme. I've been in this fight since I was six years old. Can you survive? <laughs> Whatever it takes. It's that sentence that stuck with Hidir to make him do what he does. 
We're all just products of our childhoods. Good shit having Farah handle a gun terribly. She's only like, what, six? Makes sense. Even me, a grown man shooting a 44 Magnum gets a bit blown back. Props to her for not dropping the damn thing. Now if it was a 500 Magnum. My God, look at the little peach fuzz on Farrah's cheeks. Some insane attention to detail. And just the beautiful lighting in these cutscenes to boot. They really enjoyed their backlighting in these. But hey, Halo effects just make it look better. Any further complications and we're at war with Russia. Well, let them complicate it. Price is such a goofball. And don't he look like Mario when he does this? Some strong Zero Dark 35s. Which, there's no way it's not referencing that raid that took place. And using what they learned in Clean House, we've got a mini version of it, which I am a-okay with it not being as good as Clean House because, you know, resources and timelines, so... Yeah. Yes, but we're not alone. We're in the Wolf's Den now. Ah, I get it. Do you get it? Wolf's Den? Wolf's Den? Oh my god, they're so clever. If it wasn't me, I'm glad it was you. You bet we couldn't kill him twice. He's speaking for both himself and Garrick, since if you do nothing like I did, Farah will kill Omar. Not anymore. Will you keep your Muppets on a short string, Colonel? Or what? I'll oh, hang you from it. Price can say this and get away with it, because he's Price. Or what? I'll oh, hang you from it. So, you know I gotta win the sauce. Kate, these people need our support. Calling her Kate to try and reach her on a human level, such as they aren't treating Farah's forces. I'm tired of being told who my friends are. Alex, don't. I'm going back to Urzikstan. And this was set up with his and Farah's cute little conversations on the rooftop of where will you go after? Let's get you somewhat. Oh, is he so, so clever referring to the board? So you'll notice all the guns that Farah can use during this flashback have unique animations showing us her inexperience with the weapons. Price. Oh, never show me that again, Infinity War! No! Yo, I love that scene of Batman Arkham Asylum. Thank you for the match cut to the real price. That's a hell of a view, Nikolai. Woo! Nick is back! What you're doing is unforgivable. We are innocent people. I'm guessing this is what Garrick wanted by taking the gloves off? Hey, 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 no, no. No! They do succeed in humanizing the butcher, though. It was really interesting to see this side of the man who shot a child in cold blood. We'll do. Cruiser is here. Get you. Hey, they react to our shots next to him. Stop! Something to have nothing to do with this! You tell that to the boy in the embassy. Which relates to what Price says soon about drawing a line where they need it. Maybe if Infinity Horde wasn't scared to make the good guys do some questionable sh**, that line would carry more weight. But in the end, it's a hollow one, and the line really only rings true for the Freedom Fighters. I can only extrapolate that the Butcher was doing what he felt he needed to do for his country, as he's a father himself, so he completely understands the pain. He has rot, but then there's that gray line of doing what has to be done, taking the gloves off, getting your hands dirty. Anyway, Modern Warfare's controversy is really all bark and no bite, and pretty much just, we show kids dying, and that's about it. Blind praise can only be a good thing for so long, and this kind of marketing that they did about their game in conjunction with what we got is just weak and pandering. And I couldn't get through this script without saying something about it, as it just kept coming into my mind and onto the page, and I kept backspacing, but here we are. And let's just look at what Price says later. With women and children. They were leverage. They were hostages. When you take the gloves off, you get blood on your hands, Kyle. What blood is he talking about exactly? Nothing happened. Where do we draw the line, Essa? You draw the line wherever you need it. They're both great lines, but in the context of them, they are so freaking hollow. It makes me long for a game that wasn't afraid to take the gloves off. All right, no more negativity. Moving on. End of the day, someone has to make the enemy scared of the dark. Now, I like that line because it alludes to what they do, should, and could be all smoke and mirrors. Batman style. And we get to put that into action next mission. We get dirty, and the world stays clean. That's church right there. This is easily one of the best COD stealth missions we've ever had. It's non-linear, and you can approach it in so many different ways. Add in playing around with the lights, and you got yourself a great A sandbox here. Plus, it's our payoff for our Bravo 6 going dark meme. On your feet, we are leaving! Woo! <laughs> yeah! Iconic line from iconic COD 4. Aw, Alex is using Hadir's rifle. You gotta have a juggernaut for the final mission, right? I did not come this far to turn back. 
I'm not asking you to turn back. I'm asking you to give me the order. Oh, God damn it, Alex. You're one of the only new interesting characters in this reboot, and they just had to kill you all as a noble sacrifice, didn't they? You are a freedom fighter, Alex. Oh, look at those eyes. It's like he's wanted to hear that his whole life. Call back to when he held her captive. Stabbing him in the side like she did with her first ever kill with Hadir. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. <laughs> Yo, excuse me, what? Infinity Ward couldn't wait for that name drop. I just know it. What exactly is this about? A task force. This ending really is just a who's who of all of our favorite names, titles, and references. So let's just speed run through it. <laughs> we already have loose ends. Tie them. I can fund assets, not outlaws. In reference to task force being considered enemies in the second game. Sakaya von Sparkov's throne. I almost buried them in Pripyat. All gilded up is canon in the reboot. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Kyle? They call him Gaz. John Octavish, SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. They really are never going to tell us how boy got his call sign. Simon Riley. And ghost! No pictures of him, of course. What are you calling this task force? One for one. It's cool for sure to have all the names we know and love back, but I can't help but wish they didn't cash in on nostalgia entirely. Still cool though. Just like COD 4, we get our little postcard in credits. For a moment, I thought this was going to be a teaser for the second game, but nah, it's just some setup for the story we get in Spec Ops. No, it's the first time. Kamarov. And to keep the name drops coming. Woo, Modern Warfare 2019. Praise for taking COD somewhere new mechanically, but so much missed potential with the story. It's straight up bastardizing events to the point of Russia banning the game. The gameplay is rock solid, and the new engine breathed desperate new life into a franchise on life support. I'd rager without Modern Warfare 2019 being such a success, Activision would have had the two-year gap for COD happen sooner than it did. We also got Warzone out of Modern Warfare 2019, which, for all its faults, brought in a lot of people and gave us a pretty good battle royale that could stand up to the heat of Fortnite and Apex Legends. Thoughts on Modern Warfare 2019? Love it? Hate it? In the end, I started playing it late and just decided to wait for Modern Warfare 2 to come out to really get into the multiplayer, so I can't really speak to that. The campaign is still a good four hours if you're looking to do something to do on an afternoon. Anyway, remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!